moving a heavy load on his back while heavily sweating and getting helpless and suffering from the hot weather till he came upon the door of a merchant's house with a wet yard. It had a weather like heaven. There was a big terrace by the door. He put his load on the terrace to rest a little while. In the house, he saw a big garden many workers and stewards there, all kinds of foods, ready to please. And he smelled a good aroma. Then he looked to the skies and said, Oh God, and creator, and provider for animals, I beg your forgiveness from all my sins, and I turn to you from all my deficiencies, and there is no objection to your order, and I cannot question what you did. You are the pure one, you can satisfy whomever you want, and make poor whoever you want. You gave many blessings and infinite comfort to the owner of this house, who enjoys the good and aromatic weather, and the good wine, and his enjoyment is at the highest. Then he recited this poem. What should I say of this world, that it never stops from working? Gives a king crown to one, gives a fish in the sea to another, gives one a luggage of milk and honey, covers him with fur and silk. This is the deed of the nature and earth. Look how you can benefit from it. As he finished the poem, he wanted to take his load and continue on his way. Suddenly, a small and beautiful boy with a good height came out of the door. He took the porter by his sleeve and said, Come with me, as the owner is asking. He saw that he couldn't disobey the boy, there was no way but to go to the owner. He put the load with the guard at the door and went to that house with the boy. He saw a house built with happiness, with an air mixed with glee. He saw the best looking men sitting there, with all kinds of fruits, sweets, flowers and delicious foods, telling stories with all kinds of instruments, lying with beautiful maidens. Seeing all of this, Porter Sinbad was astonished, and he turned to himself and said, This house is either a gin place or the house of a king. He then politely went forward and greeted the men and prayed for them. Then the owner of the house said, What is your name and what do you do? Porter said to him, My name is Porter Sinbad and I... I move people's loads and, and live with what they pay me. Oh, 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 Porter, know that my name is Sinbad. I am Sinbad of the Sea, Sinbad Bahri. And my intentions are for you to recite that poem that you were speaking at the door once more for me. Porter got embarrassed and told to Sinbad Bahri, I, I, I swear you not to pick on me for for pain and hardship make a person dumb and, and, and be, be polite. Oh, innocent Sinbad. I, my intentions aren't to embarrass you. We are as, as, as brothers. Recite the poem for me, as I like it a lot. As Porter Sinbad saw his interest in hearing the poem, he recited it once more. Sinbad Bahri grew happy and said, Oh, Sinbad, know that I did not find great wealth and happiness as this, except after seven voyages. No, in Bedwater, a man cannot outrun his fate. The story of the first voyage of Sinbad Bakri. Know that my father was a merchant, and when his life ended, I drank and ate and partied with my friends in the park. I mean, I thought this benefit would state me. But this, this benefit would suit me. After many days, I came to my senses. And all I realized all of the money was gone. Oh, and I, feeling regret, remembered Solomon M.D. Daoud and the three things he ordered that were best.
better than a dead lion. And three, two is better than the room. So I took everything that remained and I sold it. And I collected 3,000 dirhams. Oh, and I felt the desire to travel. I wanted to see islands and cities. So I bought some merchandise and I traveled up from Baghdad to Basra. We traveled on good winds. Then I went to Basra and from there took a ship with a number of other businessmen. And we were going from island to island and from sea to sea, buying and selling our merchandise until one day we happened on one of the gardens of heaven. The captain stopped the ship there and the ship's residents came out and began setting up camp and starting fires. Some were washing clothes while others were cooking, while others were about enjoying the island. I was also one of those about enjoying the island. The people of the ship were busy eating and drinking when suddenly the captain of the ship stood at the edge of the island and shouted, Oh, those who live in the ship and those who want to be saved, go to the ship as fast as you can. Abandon what you have on the island and save yourselves. This is not an island, but it's a huge whale. Soil and stones have collected on it and trees have grown and it became like an island. Since you lit your fires, their warmness will affect it. It will start moving soon and take all of you to the sea and you will all be drowned. Stand up fast, save yourselves from death. The people of the ship got scared after hearing Captain's words and left all their stuff on the island and rushed to the ship. Some people made it to the ship while some others were still on the island as it began moving and it sank deep into the sea. And all those things that were on the island sank in the sea. I was also one of those still on the island, but the almighty God set me free and put being saved in my fate, and a large wooden board came close to me. I grabbed it and I sat on it because it was so hard to let life go. I began paddling my feet like ducks, and the waves were helping me from left to right. But the captain of the ship raised the sails and began moving with those who could save themselves and did not look back for drowned. I was continuously looking at the ship until it disappeared from my sight and I began to believe in death and got disappointed in life. I was on that board all night and was in that state for one night and one day until <laughs> winds helped me to an island that its trees hung toward the sea and I grasped a branch and in that dying state I climbed up the tree and fell down onto the island. I saw my feet that were bitten by fish and got wounded but I didn't notice due to my panic. I fell on that island like dead and was in that state for one night and one day and suddenly my body came back to myself and I began walking around on the island, sometimes on my hands, sometimes on my knees, eating the island's fruits and drinking from its springs. After a few days my soul came back into my body and my disability transitioned to ability and I fastened the cane from one of the island's trees, began walking around enjoying the creator's crafts using it. Some days passed in this way when I was walking on the edge of the island and suddenly I saw a large black figure in the distance. I thought it was some wild sea animal. As I got closer, I saw that it was a large horse that was tied to the edge of the island. As I got closer to it, it made and scared me and suddenly a man came up from the ground, came toward me and shouted, Who are you and where are you from and why are you on this island? I said to him, Oh sir, I'm a merchant. My ship sank, but Almighty God put me on a board and he moved me on the waves until he brought me to this place. As the man heard my words, he grabbed my sleeve and said, Come with me. I went with him and he took me to a crypt. And from there, we went to a large house that was underground. Know that we are a population spread across this island. We are the keepers of the flock of King Merjan. Every month, we bring the best horses here and tie them by the sea so that they mate with the seahorses. Then we hide underground ourselves so as to not disturb this. There are no horses better than these and this is the time of the seahorses coming. If God wills, I will take you with me to visit my city and meet King Merjan. And no, if you hadn't found me, you wouldn't have found anybody and you would have died and nobody would have known about you. However, I became the reason you are alive, so that you may go back to your city. Oh, I thanked him and thanked him and, and thanked him for his kindness and grace. 
Then they gave me a horse, and we rode day and night until we came to King Marjon City. They got off, they went to the king and told him my story. The king asked to see me, and I went to the king and told him my story. He was amazed. He told me, hey, Charles, I swear to go, but this was not your death time. And, and now you are released from these hardships, and, and thanks to God for this health. I stayed with the king for a long time, and he made me writer of the ship's goods in the port. Oh, I was happy here in this country for a long time. And every time I would go to the port, I would ask all the ships coming in about Baghdad. But no one heard of Baghdad and I became homesick. Now in King Marjan's country, called Kabal, there is an island. And on that island, you can hear drums and songs every night. No one is around. Oh, I saw many strange things in this first, first journey. I mean, so many, it would confuse the mind. And it would take too long to tell you my story. I was continuously traveling on these islands until one day I was walking along the edge of the sea, leaning on a stick as a habit, when suddenly the, a ship appeared in the distance that had many merchants in it. As the ship came close to the port, the captain lowered the sail, and all the ship's residents came out to the island with their merchandise. Then I went to the captain of the ship and asked him if there was anything left on the ship or not. The captain said, Oh uh, yeah, so great, there are some goods left in the ship, but their owner has drowned in one of the islands, and his goods have been left with us as borrowed goods. Our aim is to sell them and give the money to his relatives and children. I said to the captain, what was the name of the owner of this merchandise? The captain answered, His name was Sinbad Bahri, who drowned in the sea. Well, I, I looked at him closely, and I remembered him, and I loudly shouted, Oh, Sir, Captain! Know that my name is Sinbad Bahri, and I was with you on that ship. When the whale we were on began moving, you called us, and those who could go back to the ship went back, and those who could not drowned. Now I was among the drowned. Now my word is trusted by King Merjan, and know that that merchandise is mine. The captain said, Hallelujah, there is no trust left. I said, Oh, captain, what is the use for this word, as I have told you my story? Since you heard that I said that there is merchandise whose owner is drowned, now you want to seize upon that merchandise, and that is forbidden to you. As I saw with my own eyes, that the owner of those goods drowned with a number of his friends. How is it that you claim that you are the owner of this property? I said, oh, Captain, hear my story and take my words to your ears so that truth becomes obvious to you and know that lying is the way of hypocrites. After that, I told my story to the Captain and all the companions who were with us on the ship knew my story and knew the truth of my words. And all of them sworn that they could not believe that I was saved from death, saved from being drowned. They took all my merchandise off the ship and surrendered, <laughs> surrendered it to me and saw that none of it was lost. I sold everything I had in that city and obtained lots of goods. When a group of merchants set out to travel, I put my merchandise in their ship and we went from ba Basra to Baghdad. I went out of that ship and I went to my home. Oh, know that when I had returned, all my friends and relatives gathered around and congratulated me on my health and safe return. Now, oh, Sinbad, know that these are the strange things that happened to me in my first voyage. And tomorrow, God willing, I, I will tell you the story of my second voyage, as it is stranger than this one. Then Sinbad the sailor invited Sinbad the porter to eat, and gave him a hundred ounces of red gold, and said, You have made me happy with your words. Oh, 